Please keep your hands together for a man who's into another preliminary final from the Geelong Footy Club, James Kelly, everybody. <laughs> Thanks for coming on the show, mate. Did you see Lingy's comments before? We should really give you the right of reply. Yeah, I did say that. You know, um, yeah, I don't know what to say. It's a bit rough coming from a big pink pig, so... <laughs> 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 it's everything, it's everything OK? Everything OK? Like, just seriously, everything OK internally? Internally down in Chillon? Yeah, right everything's on, fine, yeah. Like, um... <laughs> Fling and I are great mates. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. you're both very attractive men, so let's oh. just leave it at that. I think this relationship yeah. threatens to... I hope I've to... got him covered, actually. <laughs> <laughs> this relationship threatens to tear the team apart on the eve of another grand final, do yeah. you think? Well, I hope not, but um, I'm sure we'll be able to settle on maybe on Mad Monday or something. Great. Yeah. <laughs> great performance again today. I mean, they were always going to come at you hard. Did you feel like you still had petrol tickets left at the end of that today, or...? Given the amount of underdone players you've taken in, you, you, you did feel the pinch at the end of that one. Uh, I think we did. You know, that, that last quarter, they really came came at us pretty hard. And um, being down the back line, we really felt like we we're under the pump. And um, realistically, we probably got off the hook a little bit. They're yep. missing a few goals. But um, I think the guys that we've got coming back in, like Chappie and um, a few other guys, and Otto, are getting another week under their belt. Um, they're going to be good for that in the long yeah, run. for sure. James, we're going to look at a couple of packages now. Summaries yep. of this game as we saw it. This is the third term, and really, you guys were under the pump all of a sudden after Jason Akermanis has booted two goals to start off the third term, but really the experience of Ling, Ablett, who we're seeing here, just really rose and really steered the team home. You seem like such a composed outfit when the yeah. pressure was on. Yeah, they were fantastic. And to see um, Scarlo there and Lingy again, you know, when you're in those sort of situations, you look for your senior players to sort of step up, and um, across the board, all our, our older guys were fantastic. Scarlo just phenomenal and you were beside him today or yeah. in the vicinity he just he yeah. amazes doesn't he yeah he's fantastic you know the way he, he reads the ball and um his defensive skills and and then how he turns that into a sort of a transitional attack is is fantastic you yourself yeah. as well though you had some great moments especially late in the game you took a mark which you didn't even think was going to be a mark did you no the old uh, the old spoil <laughs> accidental mark so you, you spoil yeah. it you punch and it goes right up in the air and do you think then hang on if i grab this again it's a mark yeah well i I sort of actually thought, shoot, I sort of missed it, but um, it fell back down in my lap, which was which was good. So. <laughs> you mentioned that the chances that the dogs had, they had plenty of them in the final term. In fact, yeah. we counted six in the space of ten minutes. These things, I mean, they break your heart if you're a dog supporter because these are skilled guys. We're seeing Higgins, Acker twice, Brian Lake, Adam Cooney and Brad Johnson. Now, is this the pressure that you're putting on? Is it nerves for them? How did you read it? Um, I think it's a little bit of, little bit of both. Um, like, I was really happy with all our boys and the amount of pressure they did put on throughout the whole day. And um, I think that sort of showed. And probably a little bit of tiredness as well because it was a pretty, pretty uh, intense physical game. So all those sort of things contribute. Did you watch last night's game, Adelaide uh, v Essendon? Did you watch that at all? I did, yeah. I yeah. think there's one man in your organisation who didn't watch it, um, your runner, because last night a runner was uh, had a 50 metre against him for running over the mark, and this is your runner today. Bang! 50 metres right there. What is yeah. your runner's name? And why? That's, um, that's Dale Amos. He's actually our VFL coach, our reserves coach. So he was um, new to the role today. And he, uh, yeah. <laughs> did it come up after the game? It did, actually, yeah. I think there was a few little whispers to him, but um, <laughs> so I think he'd be better for the experience. He did not, he, not run in your match. No, no that, that was his that was his debut. Um, normally our, our fitness manager Paul Haynes does it, but um, they what, he couldn't be bothered doing it in a final. <laughs> 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 everyone's, everyone's just a bit sick of him, so um... <laughs> he chucked a sickie this morning. Yeah. Uh, speaking of bloopers today, what do you think about the centre bouncers? Uh, early in the game, they were really going skew if weren't they? The umpires yeah. recalled a few. Yeah, they were. They weren't. Um... I don't, know, I don't want to get fined or anything, but they weren't great. But I suppose yeah. everyone, everyone has off days, I guess. Yeah, yeah well, <laughs> you know what? <laughs> I'll tell you something, James. Not much escapes the attention of Australia's number one boundary rider, Andy Marr. And here's him uh, commentating on the bad bounces. The umpires having troubles, boys, as you've uh, pointed out. They went out uh, at quarter time and they practised the bouncing. Asked whether there's something wrong with the knob in the middle of the ground. <laughs> they said that it's OK. There's no problem. As it turned out, there was something wrong with the knob on the boundary line. Uh... <laughs> 
little worn patch in the middle of the ground, which becomes colloquially known. That's easy. It's known as the knob. And the knob wasn't. It was bouncing yeah. sideways off the knob all day. And on our show, you're colloquially known as the knob. So well, that has been said before. Hey, James, after the game, you would have sung this song with gusto, I'm sure. What is going on when Geelong sings the song? We've had a look at some footage. Here's one from a uh, recently from a few weeks ago. You guys are doing some gurning, <laughs> pulling some faces. Are you impersonating your own cheer squad? I mean, what, is, <laughs> what, what are you doing here? What is oh, this? Look, look, I don't know. <laughs> I actually haven't seen this, but... Um, yeah. What's it's going the same, on? Same blokes doing it, Boris and, uh, and Scarlo. They in, love that sort in of stuff. In-joke? Uh, yeah, I think it's just a joke between the two of them, you know, not uh, not too many of us do. <laughs> but it's because for you guys, you've won 63 out of 68 games or something. Winning is a joke for you now. Yeah, <laughs> I wouldn't say that, but, um, yeah, it's, it's nice to be getting used to it at least. Speaking of winning, somebody's going to win the tool of the week after this. Dave Hughes to present that when we return. <laughs>